Hey gang, I'm Tim from Core Electronics and welcome to our next step on our Python Odyssey. Today we'll be nose diving headfirst into all the keywords within Python and simple code examples for each of them. Keywords are the nuts and bolts vocabulary of any programming language. These are the reserved words that make up the syntax and vocabulary of programming languages. They serve as a fundamental building block and tools for communication between you and your computing device. Because of this, they will come up in basically every piece of code you ever write. A keyword is a combination of letters, usually forming a word that has a special meaning. This special meaning can be commands or parameters, which will be executed as soon as the computing device encounters the keyword when the code is run. This is the reason keywords are reserved by programming languages. Reserved means that they cannot be used in defining variables, classes, or functions. Therefore, keywords are often referred to as reserved names. They are also case sensitive. By having a firm grasp of the scope of possibilities that keywords bring to the table, you'll be better equipped in your daring voyages through the Python programming landscape. So let's get into it. Starting off, let me introduce you to the reference piece on our Core Electronics website. This over here will give you a table of every keyword in Python and a description of their purposes in layman's terms which can be found right here. They're also loosely organized with a programming beginner in mind, with keywords most likely to encounter or utilized found at the top, whereas the keywords least likely to be found or utilized down at the bottom. Now, it's worth understanding that a number of these keywords have great depth to them when utilized in code, such as those associated with looping structures. And this greater depth will be investigated in further tutorials. Looping structures allow you to run one or more lines of code repetitively, but this guide is more so you can feel grounded in the lingo and feeling of Python whilst being aware of the tools it supplies you with. Let's start with the keyword none. None is useful as it represents a null value or no value at all. It's important to realize that this is different than a zero, it's not an empty string, and it's not a Boolean variable type. Only none can be none. And because of it, it has its own data type. So on the screen right now, you can see I've made a variable called A and I've given it its none type. So if I was to go print type A, you'd be able to see the type of none. Yes, I want to save it. And you'll see it's classed as a none type. Next are the keywords true and false. These keywords are the two Boolean values found in Python. When you're talking Boolean, it's either a statement is true or the statement is false. Now note that there's a capital letter for both these keywords. So also worth noting, the true keyword is the same as one, whereas the false keyword is the same as zero. So this is them used as keywords in a program, but they also display as a result of a comparison operator. So right here is a comparison operator. Is five less than six? So if I was to run this program over here, print five is less than six will come up as true because that's a true statement. The next keywords we're gonna look at is if statements and also including the keywords elif and else. These keywords have a lot of depth to them and deserve being investigated significantly more than what I will through this overview. So these keywords are used in conditional statements. Elif is shorthand for else if. The else keyword, imagine if not this, then do this. That's the kind of mindset. So these keywords are all about asking a computer a question about a variable or data, and then based on the results of that question, performing a certain task. I have over here an example of this on the computer. So let's say A equals 150, and we'll say for this example, 150 is 150 centimeters. So Let's say if A equals 150 print, wow, you're just tall enough for this ride. L if, so else if, if A is greater than 150, you'll print to the shell, you're good to go on this ride, kid. Else print, sorry, kid, you're just not tall enough for this ride. It's like every time you go to the carnival when you're a child. So if I was to run this when it has 150, the computer's gonna go to the if statement, see A, equals exactly 150 and print that result. So I'll demonstrate this right now. Boom, wow, you're just tall enough for this ride. However, if I was to make this individual slightly taller, 155, 
This will run it through the elif. So a equals 155. If a equals 150, so it doesn't in this case, so it jumps down to the next one. Elif a greater than 150. So we'll see what that does. Naturally, it will print. You're good to go on this ride, kid. Great feeling as a kid. And the worst feeling as a kid is when you're not tall enough for the ride. So if I was to say A equals 145, run this, save it. Sorry, kid, you're not tall enough for this ride. Hopefully that gives you a brief understanding of if, elif, and else statements. And also the syntax with Python when using this kind of keywords. While keywords are next, these have to do with looping and this concept of looping will be investigated in further tutorials. So the while loop lets you create a, a repeating set of statements so long as the condition remains true. On screen now is a code example of a while keyword. So following this through, I've set up a variable called a equals one. And while a is less than 15, print a. So that will print it to the shell. And then the next step will be a equals a plus one. So originally a will equal one. Once it goes through here, a will equal two. Once it goes again, it will equal three. Once it goes again, it will equal four. And this will continue until it gets to 15. So if I was to run this module, you'll see it starts at one and follows all the way up through to 14. Once it gets to 15, the while loop is complete and the code ends. So this code gives a good idea of simple syntax for a looping structure. Four keywords now. These are another looping structure which will let you execute a set of statements once for each item in a list. So I've given a simple example of for loops in the code on the computer. So this code will add up every element in a list. So starting up here, I made a variable called B, which is a list and it has all these numbers in it. I've also set up another variable called total. Total currently is zero. So for, this is the keyword element, so element is when you're talking about lists, an element is each singular piece of data in that list. So for each element in this variable B, the total, this value, becomes the total plus element. So what's effectively happening is every item in this list is being summed together. So once this for loop is complete, print the total and also print the type of B. So if I run this module, you'll see the sum of all these numbers is 44 and the class type or the type of this variable B is a list. So this code gives a good idea of the simple syntax for a for loop. The next keywords worth talking about are continue keyword, break keyword and the pass keyword. Continue allow you to stop the current iteration and continue the, the, to the next section of the code Break lets you break out of a loop, even if the while or false condition is still true, and passes like a null statement. So here on the screen is an example of break being used in code to prevent the iteration occurring if A is a negative number. So currently A equals one. So while A is less than 15, added complexity, an if statement, A less than zero, break. This is the new keyword. Print A, A equals A plus one. So what's gonna happen is this while loop's gonna go round and round and round until it gets up to 15 and then stop. So if I run this code right now, you'll be able to see A printed all the way up to the value of 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, all the way up to 15. So if however, A started at a negative number, this will run A equals negative one while A less than 15. If A is less than zero, break. What this will happen is it will stop the code and nothing will be printed. So this is how you can use break in a simple code. You can use the same syntax to put pass and continue into this code. If it's a negative one value and instead of using break, I decided to instead use continue. What's gonna happen is this is a negative one value and the continue will effectively do the same thing as break and it will get you out of this loop. If I was to change continue to pass and run it like this, you'll see that the numbers still get added up. That's because pass just effectively goes on to the next step. So A equals negative one while A less than 15, if A less than zero, and it is in this case, 
then pass. So it just goes on to print A, A equals plus one, and then it goes back to the beginning of the while loop. The break, continue, and pass statements in Python will allow you to use for loops and while loops much more effectively in your code. The next keywords worth looking at are in and not in. These are methods to check to see if a value is present in an object or if the value is not in an object. These return Boolean true and false values. The code example I've brought, you can see has a string variable and a list variable. So print A and B. So in this case, A is gonna be, so the value for A is gonna be looked for inside B. And because A shares orange with B, that will print true. Now print A not in B, because A is present inside B, that will return false. So if I run this right now, true for this one, false for that one. The next keywords worth looking at are is and is not. These are two methods to test to see if two variables are equal or not equal. They return Boolean true and false values. So looking at the code example I brought along, you can see I've created a variable with a string literal called, with, and the string literal is banana. And the list I have here has some numbers and also has banana. So print A is B because A is not B this will print false and print A is not B because A is not B that will print true. And that's what you can see down here. Now, if I was to change B to only banana, you'll now see print A is B to be true and print A is not B to be false. Okay, next keywords are and, or, and not. These are all logical operators and I'll demonstrate in code how they function and how to use them with Python syntax. And here will return true because five is greater than four and five is less than 10. Over here, B, five is greater than nine. That's not true, but five is less than 10. So print B will be true because one of these statements is correct. So not gives the reverse of whatever the Boolean result is. So if I was to make a variable C with the, the Boolean false, by printing not C, that will in fact print true. So running the code, you'll see that all of these things come out true. The next keywords we're thinking about are import from and as. So import allows you to import a module and consider the module to be the same as the code library. A module is a file containing a set of functions. Using from keyword allows you to import the specific parts of the module and not all of it. The as keyword can be used to create different names for things. So jumping into the code, import date time. So date time is one of these libraries full of modules. So if you did that, you'd get everything out of the date time. From date time, import just the time modules. So that's what this does and import date time as A. So that means if you ever refer to date time in your code, you can just type A. So if I was to run this, nothing would pop up. But all those things would be happening in the background. Now for class keyword. A class is like a blueprint for creating objects, and this keyword is used to define classes. The code for this has created a class called A class. And inside it, there is a property named B. This is a keyword with a lot of depth. So more information about it will be dived into in later content. Def and return. These are both keywords used in the creation of functions. So a function is a group of statements that perform a specific task. For example, looking at the code in the screen, this is a method of getting the user to type the function and their name into the idle shell, and then it will print hello person's name, good morning. Let me demonstrate. So the function's running in the background. So if I'm gonna type greet me, Tim, the computer then responds with, hello Tim, good morning. So in this code, the definition of the function, that's the function's name, greet, and then name, this is where you type in what you wanna say, print hello, 
name, that's where you've written your name, good morning. Now this return four plus four, this prints and displays to the idle shell eight because that's necessarily what's happening. But see what happens when I move return to before the print. And now press run. Everything seems as normal. However, if I type great, my name again, and run, press enter. Now it only displays eight. So this gives an idea of the code's flow. So def greet, that's the function name that we gave, name, return four plus four. So when you when return four plus four happens, after that point, all of this is ignored and the code line, the code finishes. So this return four plus four ends up here, down here, and you never, it, the code never gets the opportunity to get to print, hello, your name, good morning. Moving on, del is shorthand for delete and is a simple keyword which you can use to remove the value of a variable. As you can see with the code over here, when I run it, the code has deleted the variable a and it produces a syntax error, which you can see here. That's because if you follow through the code, a equals 42, that's a variable created. Delete that a variable and then print a. Lambda is an interesting keyword. It can allow you to create a small anonymous function that can take up any number of arguments but can only have one expression. A code example should clear this up and also demonstrate the syntax when using this keyword. Jumping into the computer, you'll be able to see this. Over here, this will produce a value of 18 and it makes it very easy to vary results printed. So a equals lambda b, b plus 10, print a bracket eight. So effectively b is now given the value of eight. So running this gives 18. Raise keyword lets you raise an exception. It's useful in looping structures if the information being looped doesn't meet your desired criteria. So you can define what kind of error to raise and also the text to print to the user. So check out the computer example. So x equals negative one. If x is less than zero, raise a type error. Sorry, no numbers below zero. So if you didn't want a type error, you can instead have an exception error. So if I was to replace type error with exception and run the code now, you'll still get an error issue, but it will be a different type of error issue. Try, accept, and finally are all related keywords for use when testing code. The try keyword lets you test a block of code for errors. The accept keyword lets you handle the error. And finally, keyword lets you execute the code regardless of the result of the try and accept keywords. This is the kind of syntax you'll see when using these keywords. Imagine this as part of a larger code block, and then hopefully you'll be able to see how these could be useful as a way of testing code. So there are a couple other keywords. The keywords global and non-local are useful at higher levels of Pythonisting. So global declares a variable as a global from a non-global scope. Effectively, this allows the variable to be used outside of the function it was created in. Non-local variables are declared using the non-local keyword. These are used to work with variables inside nested functions when the variable shouldn't belong to the inner function. Nested functions are functions within functions. And finally, the last keywords are async and await. These are complex high-level keywords and are used when multiple lines of code are run simultaneously. This is effectively the computer multitasking and is referred to in Python and other programming languages as coroutines. It's too complex for this overview, but it's worthwhile knowing about. And that's all of them. Going through all these keywords should prevent any surprises in the future and cement yourself with a complete overarching Python keyword knowledge. Hopefully this has grounded you significantly more and prevented you from being caught off guard and losing motivation because of it. Instead, I hope you're keeping excited by the possibilities laid out before you. Until next time, stay cozy.